I'm going to ramble on about a couple things. Picks and how they affect your tone. This is like a, a topic I've been seeing a lot, but thinking about doing something on. Then I search and there's tons of videos out. So this is just my opinion. And then kind of uh, the playing with purpose and then a couple of things I saw from Rick Graham. First thing is picks. And picks and how they affect the tone and how I noticed that on this guitar. This is my Sur Standard Pro. They have a Standard Plus now, which just adds a quill tap, a roasted neck, a maple neck, and... Uh, but other than that, same neck. This is an even C Slim, they call it. It's actually, it's, it feels a little different, uh, a lot different actually than my Gibson Les Paul, which is a 60 Slim. But I love this HSS configuration. Thought about putting a white pick guard on this, maybe a Thornbucker in the back. I've got a, a Wilkinson locking, a uh, new one that Pete Thorne actually helped them design. I got one of those on, it's on back order. It's a drop in for the Goto 510, Goto, Gota, I don't know. Uh, so, <clears throat> first thing, picks. This is my tried and trusty, tried and true focus, there you go, Dunlop uh, pick. This is a .96 millimeter. It is, um, was it Delrin, I think, is the material. This is uh, not not tortoise shell, but whatever they call it. Maybe this is Delrin. This is I, a pick I picked up, and actually the, it's crooked, the print. This is a Fender Heavy. And I picked these up because I played one that was like somebody threw it out, some semi-famous guy or whatever. I started playing this pick, and I was like, wow, this is pretty good. And it turned out to be a Fender Heavy, which they say is one millimeter. I don't know if I believe that but I cannot find my micrometer, which would tell me exactly. And that's not it. But I played that for the longest time, got a cool little black one here. Um, and then there's actually a cool history of, of these. You, know, you should look it up how the tortoise shell picks came about. Not really tortoise shell, but I forgot what they call it. So then I decided to try these. This is a Jim, Jim Dunlop's version of the same thing of the Fender Heavies. Um, it seems to be similar, maybe a little thinner, and it actually has a different tone as well. This is basically, I don't know which one to show first, but let's do some digging in here. We've got the Fender Heavy, I'm going to do the Fender Heavy first, which is this guy. I'm going to play like a bluesy kind of... Something in A, we've got a, a little bit of delay there. So you hear that single coil, that honky, mid-rangey kind of hollowish sound. Um, <clears throat> that is what I like. So then I grab my old ones because every night it seems to change. Something changed. I wake up and I go, oh I, oh, I hate this pick. So I go to this guy. And let's hear the same thing. tone changes and it drives me crazy because I like this the feel of this pick play the same lightness on the heavy now let's go to the Dunlop even even brighter than that back to the this Dunlop, right? Immediately, it's like dead. So I, you know, I really wish I could find this feel of this. And I've got a just a bin full of picks, and I have pick day where I go and I try to find the right pick. So those are some thoughts. Next thing I want to talk about is something I saw in Rick Graham that kind of piqued my interest, and that was uh, practicing methods. And he is just—I think he's an alien, really. Honestly, he is an alien and does not exist on this planet. But he talks about that he has, ever since he can remember, he has played in front of a mirror. I don't have a mirror like that, so I just, well, right now I have this viewfinder, which I, I'm looking over, right? Um, and then also, but so I would put my webcam up and I would try to show that. But taking a passage like this, because like now I can't show you how, how sloppy I am, so I need to go to more distortion. <laughs> Do you ever go play something and just probably a half hour ago, I was actually kind of flying through that. I mean, it was, I was impressing myself. And then I hurried up, 
Ram put on a different shirt, and I totally can't play it like I was playing it. This is how inconsistent I am. Aside from making it look good, you know, I was trying to analyze, you know, the pinky situation here. So look at this. I'm not trying to point my middle finger at you, but that is a callus. I've been practicing a lot. You should too. Long time ago, when I was like 15, my guitar instructor, very briefly over the summer, was telling me to keep my pinky in, you know, but there is just no way. I mean, that pinky is, look at that. It's like a freak of nature. It's weird. It's all, if you look at it long enough, it's just very disturbing. Well, he doesn't want to stay close to the fretboard, and he would tell me, the further away that your fingers have to go, the slower, it's, the more it's going to slow you down. And it's not all about speed. I'm not trying to tell you, you know, there's a lot of guys out there who go, oh, you're just a speed guy. Well, I like doing it because I like the way it sounds and I like playing it, but it doesn't mean I can play it well. So when I'm practicing, I do little things like to see how clean I can get it. Like Vinnie Moore style, look, up, look him up from the 80s. He had this super like, um, very muted percussive. But he did it so well, it, it was really awesome. My point was, is keep your fingers really close and try to practice it. And if you're like me, who's been playing since he was like 12, I'm in my 40s now, I've got bad habits. And the worst part is, I started out on, on like thin Ibanez necks. Then I went to, well, it was actually a Charvel. Then it went to an Ibanez. Then I sold that. After that, I got another Charvel. That's another story, because it's gone now. A San Dimas. Then it was a Paul Reed Smith. That was a CE24, I think, anyway. Um, there's a bad story with that, too, but I'm not going to tell you that. Maybe you'll hear it on a live chat. But that was a wide thin. So I was still on that thin mode, right? Well, after my tragedy with the Paul Reed Smith, I went on and got a McCarty. And it was, on the, it was early days of the Internet. Uh, I found it on this website, maybe in North Carolina or something. And it is, it's back there somewhere. It is right there. So that one has a wide fat. So I got used to kind of the fatter necks and then I went up to the Les Pauls and that was kind of somewhere, but it's been a while since I've been on one of these really fast necks. So I did a, a video the other day and I actually accidentally erased the footage. It was kind of, and I'll just sum it up because it was probably too long. Anyway, it was called Playing With Purpose and it was, you know, kind of meaning what you play, playing what you mean, instead of just fumbling around on something. So if I took a passage like this. So we've got. I've kind of written that out so I can repeat it. I don't think that was right. But playing that instead of just going. We're playing as fast. Have you seen that video out there? That guy that's just going. That is not playing with purpose. That guy, it's got to be a joke because it's horrible. But man, he's got a lot of views. It really goes back to the whole Rick Graham thing, you know. And you're playing a passage like that, look in the mirror, look on your webcam, try to play that, and you know, keep things nice and neat. Keep it close to the fretboard. Ooh, you hear that? I did that earlier. It's gone. And I erased that one. It even sounded even better. I've never done it. I can't even do it. It was like there it is. It's like one of those tap ones. But I did it with my finger. I keep playing that lick, so I'm not gonna play it anymore because you're sick of it. I'm sure. This is another lick I used to play all the time. Actually, I still kind of play it, but, and it's basically like this. And it's just out of the pentatonic. Having like a starting and an end point, it's almost like a drummer that does fills, but doesn't end when the fill ends. It is really terrible. So obviously like practicing the metronome so you can have this count in your head. Right? put an extra note in there but those are just like thoughts in my head and I just threw up all over the camera so so to summarize play in front of the webcam or a mirror find me a pick 
like that sounds like this, but feels like that, right? I want that alligator. Hey, thanks for watching. If you watch to the end, it means maybe it interests you a little bit. So consider hitting that subscribe button, leave me a comment, and then tell me what your challenges are. Tell me what picks you like, and we'll have a pick discussion. Have a good week.